Hello, everyone, and welcome back for the second segment of the May 19th Trips and Traps. Andy Serling, Eric Donovan. Three bar races to bring you all to our frat, so let's get down to business. We'll take a look at Missing Lisa Lewis and Hopsy from the 14th. It's race number nine, and uh, we'll highlight them at the start. Yeah, I, what's interesting, uh, Miss, Missing Lisa Lewis will be up, up front early. Hopsy, who wins the race, breaks a length and a half, two lengths slow, and for me... What Hopsy did in this race is a key to why, even though Missing Lisa Lewis, who may well have been using this race as a prep off the layoff, had some trouble in the race, never gets clear in the stretch, as you'll see. But I want to know how much you want anybody from this race, considering how well Hopsy ran. That's true. I mean, Hopsy could be a horse that just might be getting a little bit better for the Aspieson Barn. We've seen a number of these types of horses that they just, you know, run a, run a race that doesn't seem to blow you out, it, you know, blow, blow everyone else out of the water. Then they just keep improving a little bit at a time. But here's Missing Lisa Lewis getting back on the picture, steadying a little bit down inside. And, and you know, while she does have, well, he does have the trouble uh, early on in the race here, steadying. When you get to the turn, I don't think this trouble really means all that much because the jockey was able to get him into a good position, you know, good striking position coming off the turn at the top I of the stretch. I agree. Steadying in these turf races is overrated. I mean, it's one thing Everyone to check steadies. back and, right. and take back, but people are steady because they're steadying to maintain position. And the thing that I thought was exceptional about Hopsy's performance, and not that I'm in love with Hopsy going forward, though I think he's in good form, but I think it's a negative the others was this race didn't fall apart. The horse is stalking the pace, finished 2-3 in this race. Hopsy's the only horse who made a real move. He did it after getting left, and he absolutely circles the field. Missing Lisa Lewis, as you'll see in the stretch, never, ever gets a clear scene to run through. The question is, do you really care that much the next time? Well, that's a good question. And missing Lisa Lewis is a horse that we've all got to know pretty well. It's had you know a ton of chances. I think everybody knows what Missing Lisa Lewis is all about. The right scenario unfolds, gets a pace, you know, gets a good trip. Of course, he could win. Uh, we'll see now uh, Hopsy getting on the screen toward the back of the pack there in the blue silks and you know missing Lisa Lewis up front and we'll just take a look at the differences from this point on the two horses having their trips. Right. Now, obviously Hopsy gets the outside and gets this clean run on the outside which we talk about and like to have in the turf but he really makes an impressive run. Now, Lisa, missing Lisa Lewis is sort of behind horses and he think the rider thinks for a second I'm going to get a seam then the horse on the outside closes it up as this horse drifts a little bit here. The question is if missing Lisa Lewis had a real punch would she have gotten shut off? Yeah, I know that's a good question. Would, you be, would he have been able to beat uh, Hopsy there, too? And uh, just one more point with missing Lisa Lewis is that, uh, you know, like we said before, is that, you know, everyone knows what, what he's all about. I mean, I, I, I can't say I'd really want to bet him off this trip. If it looks like the race will unfold in his favor next time out, I'll give him a chance. I'll give him a chance. He's a horse that has trouble finding the winner's circle who perennially gets overbet. Yeah. I think this trouble is not as important as it matters, but it was first off a layoff. We got another turf route coming up, and this was from Saturday's races. This was our second race, uh, and this one thought was kind of an interesting race for a number of reasons. And we're going to get a uh, foreign language lesson, too, in, the, in this race while we talk about it. And there's uh, Pierre Le Pen for uh, Pat Kelly and also toward the back, Wonder Beyond. Both these horses, you know, I think uh, have some room for improvement in this race here. Uh, Pierre Le Pen, first time on the turf. Wonder Beyond, only time on the turf was back in November of last year. They're toward the back of the pack now. Right. Uh, Pierre Le Pen, which is French for Peter Rabbit, in case you're interested in the literary reference there. He'll drop way back and make the slingshot move in the turn. We'll get to that. Both of these horses are off the screen right now. Wonder Beato comes from a very good turf family. After getting left here, and that's important because this is an excruciating pace being set by Avenging Spirit, who, by the way, I've had absolutely enough of. Wonder Beyond is going to start moving up on the inside. As you can see, him already getting himself into the picture right there. Pierre Le Pen still well off the screen. Wonder Beyond ends up getting into a good trip, but after getting left and moving up in the slow pace, they were both compromised. Pierre Le Pen had no shot the way he was ridden, and Wonder Gang gets blocked in the stretch. Yeah, the pace here is the key because both horses on the front end, I think, are you know, able to lope along and go things go, go at a fairly easy clip. And Wonder Beyond makes a nice move up the inside, not a rush, just a, a slow gain uh, in, into contention there. I like to I like what David Cohen did on that horse there, but we'll see Pierre Le Pen uh, make this wild move toward the back of the pack, from the back of the pack, and you know just a, a big slingshot move around the turn that it's just so hard to sustain for for a very good horse, let alone a you know a horse that's trying to break his maiden. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And Pierre Le Pen hadn't been out since I think February for this race, and he ran sneaky okay in here. I, I, I I'm interested to see where he shows up in his next start. I mean, here he is making this slingshot move in this into this quarter, and what kind of chance do you have, especially considering how slow they went up front? And don't forget the two horses in front are also the two favorites and arguably the best horses in the race. While Pierre Le Pen is all the way on the outside, Wonder Beyond is getting a nice ride, sitting, saving ground behind. And while I wouldn't say he's badly blocked in the stretch, he's always encumbered with that horse on his flank. And don't forget the two leaders are quickening up 
here. Mm-hmm. So you can't realistically be expected to catch them, considering the pace, considering who they are. And don't forget, Wonder Beyond got left. Pierre Laplan understandably flattens out after making that run. But both of these horses in their next starts are going to run well. And I think uh, Wonder Beyond actually gains a little bit here at the end. I mean, only gets beat uh, a little over length at the end. It could have been worse, certainly, with the, the traffic trouble that, uh, that he had in the stretch. So uh, I think Wonder Beyond certainly a horse that you could expect to move forward next time out. And I'm you know, curious to see what Pierre Le Pen does. Uh, you know, sometimes those slingshot moves are more a catching to the eye than, than they are actually worthwhile to bet back next time. I agree, but he's still at least a little bit better than he looks. Mm-hmm. Wonder Beyond may be okay. I want no part of the first two finishers. I don't want the winner in an allowance. And Avenging Spirit and I, I'm signing the divorce papers. I wish Bobby Barbera the best of luck with this horse. I've seen enough. All right, one more race to bring you. We'll take a look at a, a two other than allowance. We're looking at Uncle Indy and a Laureate Conductor in here. Uncle Indy, the three Laureate Conductor, the 1A. They're both going to have similar kind of trouble in the stretch, but we'll uh, pause it uh, shortly after the start here and let them kind of settle in their positions. We'll pause it right about now. And there's Uncle Indy and Laureate Condac- Conductor up front. And, you know, I thought the ride here on Laureate Conductor was very interesting as they, they go down to the back stretch here. Pace right now, you know, with that with that quick turn is very slow, but it'll quicken up once they straighten away to the back stretch. And originally I thought that the jockey uh, on Laureate Conductor, I think is Alan Garcia, made the right move here in, in taking back, and it's going to happen pretty soon here. Uh, Garcia is going to take back off the uh, long shot leader in this race, who is Beresford, and there, you know, you see Garcia taking back the 1A Laureate Conductor. I thought this was the right move in here to try to settle uh, behind the leader and get a good pocket trip in here, but the pace, you know, pace gets a little quicker down the back stretch. Laureate Conductor kind of finds himself getting farther and farther back in the race here. Yeah, I- I'm not really sure exactly what to make of him, and the trouble he has, it'll be later in the race, and it- this was a pretty competitive allowance race, to say the least in here. Certainly horses, if they're not stakes quality, they're hovering around stakes quality in New York, and you are right, it is sort of interesting how he was so so close, and now, Laurie Conductor's what? A good three, three and a half lengths behind the lead, and he's just ahead of the eventual winner in here, Lime Ricky. Un- Uncle Indy has dropped even farther back. Uncle Indy's dropped back even farther, but you know what, I mean... He- Rides like this is why kind of you know you get into trouble at certain points in the race. I'm not saying he should have been up on the lead, but if he was sitting third or fourth right now, he'd have a much better shot to get a cleaner trip through the stretch. And as we'll see in the stretch, you know, basically hemmed in pretty much the whole way. And we'll see uh, Uncle Indy try to get involved here a little bit too, getting on the screen right behind Laureate conducted there. There they are both uh, toward the inside. And as we see uh, the race develop in front of them as they move for the uh, move for the stretch here, both horses are going to have a lot of traffic to deal with. Yeah, Uncle Indy at least gets a seam and readily goes through. It. You'll see him sort of not steadying but waiting for room. Laureate Conductor never, ever gets a chance to run. I think the point you're making earlier, and basically Alan Garcia back here is pretty much easing him back. He knows he can't run. He's lost any chance. Uncle Indy comes through and runs pretty gamely between horses, though overall his trip was okay considering he moved between horses. Laureate Conductor, I'm not sure what to make of him. I think your point, though, the backstretch is well taken. Basically, yeah, he just gave up position for the first half mile of the race, and he put himself out of, out of the position that might have given him a chance to win the race. Now, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Still, Laurie Conductor, at least if you liked him before this race and you want to draw next to this race next time he shows up, I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah, I think he's run two okay races so far this year for trainer Chris, Christoph Klamann as a four-year-old, and you know, we'll see if he can continue to improve through his four-year-old season. I agree. This is a, this is a good field, and we'll see a lot of these horses come coming back. Once again, that does it for Trips and Traps. We appreciate your watching that email address and keep them coming. Trips and Traps at NyraInc.com. Thanks again.